There is another person who directly criticized Meghan and her fake royal brand, and that is John Moore. The British journalist did not hesitate to mock Meghan's targeting of Target customers and her copying of Martha Stewart and the Flamingo Estate. And Moore also did not forget to mention Meghan's tarnished reputation now that she has been criticized so much. We are not surprised that things happen this way. The list of famous and influential people publicly criticizing the Sussex couple is growing longer and longer. Let us discuss it in this video, and welcome back to my channel. As I said, Jen Moore's article humorously critiques Meghan Markle's lifestyle brand, American Riviera Orchard, suggesting absurd product ideas added to her supermarket. Moore mocks Meghan's desire to market dog food, pointing out how ironic it is that she relocated to England without bringing her. Dog? She abandoned one dog in Toronto, and the one she brought to the UK got injured badly. I think it is this one that is pictured with the plaster casts. I think there was another dog that was abandoned when they went to the USA, because it did not get on with Harry. It sounds to me like the dog sheep. Left behind, had good instincts. He was smart enough to know, not like Harry. There's a lot of ambition for a brand, and Meghan always does the opposite of what she says. She bangs on with her word salad about her mission and ambition to inspire and empower women and girls. She marries the royal family and has the most powerful woman as a role model of the late queen. Elizabeth and then mocks one of the most powerful and respected women in the world. Now she thinks selling dog food, bath mats, and scented candles is empowering. It is hilarious. I think the only reason she's going into dog food is to mess with Catherine. Her brother has a dog food brand, so she's trying to go after him. The narcissist just can't resist. The late Queen Elizabeth made it quite clear they couldn't profit off of their titles. However, now Meghan is tearing up that agreement. Too many people are calling for Harry and Meghan's titles to be revoked. Yet so far, the palace's strongest move has stopped at moving these two people to the bottom of the website. Perhaps this is the reason why the Sussex couple boldly profited from the title. Meghan even used the name of a charity for her brand. Remember that King Charles also supported a development called Poundbury. It's close to the town of Dorchester and is a housing and business development with social housing aimed at creating a sustainable community. Can you imagine the Harples doing that level of charitable and community work? Meghan did steal from the King's home orchard. His cipher and label design with his wording, Highgrove Royal Orchard, if you look at his design, you will see Meghan copied him exactly. The king grows all his products one. 100% organic and gives every penny to charity. He pays to keep the shop, marketing, wages, and all other bills to maintain the upkeep. Meghan, however, her products will be supplied by the same suppliers of the dollar store, Walmart, and maybe the Old Navy are winners, with her cost being low only if she buys bulk, then raise the cost to sell at a margin of 10 0 percent, 50 0 percent. Like her grocery bag that was made in India for maybe $300, yet she's selling it for $2,000. Such a humanitarian, right? Any real humanitarian wouldn't dream of aligning themselves with luxury brands that few can afford in the best of times, let alone now. Her timing has always been the worst. A luxury brand launch when folks are shopping at food banks and can't afford hot dogs, have lost their jobs, and can't afford health care. I believe that she wishes to sell anything because she thought that Harry was a billionaire and then the truth hit. The pair of numpties are running out of money. There are old has-beens yet. Meghan just can't let go of the fact that Harry is not as rich as a prince should be, and she thinks he was without the royal family Harry is nothing. He lied about how much money he had and had access to, just like she lied about her Hollywood ties. 
They deserve each other. The question I have about her brand is who is her target audience? Celebrities and very rich people certainly won't be buying anything from her. So is she expecting the general public, a public she sees as below her, to give her their hard-earned money? If the prices are going to be like Flamingo, I don't know who her audience is going to be. Based on the items she's listed in the trademark application, it may be even she doesn't know yet. She's all over the place. That can happen, yet typically people looking to do what she claims to want to do start with one item or category of items, start small, and build once they've established themselves a bit. Martha Stewart didn't start out selling merchandise in stores or even a TV show. Nayan seems to want to do it all right now. Life just doesn't work that way. Her brand can't even succeed, let alone compete with Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart has been around long enough to have seen 100s like Megan. She has zero reason to feel threatened. Let's take a look. She started a blogger with the TIG, then she acted suitcase girl and cable show, and went to work to find a high-value rich man. Harry was her prize, however, she did not want to curtsy to Catherine, so she told Harry she was a big deal in the USA to get rich and famous. And now, 360 degrees, she is once again a blogger? Wondering why she's not selling baby clothes, food, toys, furniture, or small children's stuff. As a good mother, surely she'd want to push babies and kids' stuff. Or is this more proof there are no kids? With Megan's personality, there's no way she wouldn't bring the kids out when she gets the chance. Yet she always seemed to forget them at the crucial moment, as more and more details emerged, that she wasn't actually pregnant with the children. I'm concerned if she really cares about them. Or are they like her brand? Just appearing for the show, Megan doesn't pay attention to it. John Noir is a really good journalist, her win in the UK. She has a wicked sense of humor. She was probably one of the wittiest people who mocked Megan I've ever seen. Like she, I think Megan throws stuff at the wall and when it doesn't stick, she abandons and moves on to her next big great idea. She doesn't have the will to work hard, so if it doesn't just happen, She's done with it. I don't think she'll do much with the site. She comes off as extremely lazy. I think the exit from the royal family was mainly because she was too lazy to do the duties expected of her. She doesn't want to work, and that's obvious. It'll fizzle just like every project of theirs. She won't run it, in the sense of doing all the work. She'll only run it by barking random orders, ignoring advice, and blaming others for any failure. Megan should have picked Africa Park Riviera Orchard. That way, those horrible evil duo, and the whole world will always be reminded of that big issue they chose to ignore or address. They think they can just sweep it under the rugs or get away with it. Wrong, it will constantly be in their conscience. I've heard Gwyneth and her lawyer are just waiting and watching. If American Riviera Orchard is closely a carbon copy of Goop, then a lawsuit will be launched. I guess the same can be said of other similar lifestyle gurus, who are also doing the same on the sideline. Let the lawsuits begin so they will know how it is on the other side. They keep on suing everybody for no reason at all for the money. Clearly. They are desperate to acquire more money, as the well is nearly reaching the bottom. If you follow Harry and Meghan's downward trajectory since abdicating their royal duties, you will realize karma has been their constant companion since that abdication. Harry is constantly facing lawsuits and scandals, and Meghan is failing in every area. All Meghan has is Harry names. All you need to know about Megan, as a business person, is throwing up a starter page without any context, any product, not even securing a trademark. So there are legal shops all over the internet using American Riviera Orchard. 
She doesn't have an original thought or idea in her head. And she loves to plagiarize Goop products on Amazon, are expensive with not have very good reviews. With the list of products Megan plans to sell, she'll need to shop the size of a football field. Walmart Wallace will fail at this just like. Everything else she's attempted. And you. What is your opinion on the influencers who are constantly criticizing Megan and her brand? Please comment to let us know your views. And if you agree with my point of view, please comment OK. If not, please express so we can discuss it. Don't forget to like and share the video. Your support is our motivation. And if you want to receive notifications about the latest videos, please subscribe. We will be back soon. Thank you for watching and goodbye.